Hi friends, in this video we are going to deal with the case summary of the important and latest Supreme Court judgment pronounced now in the area of contract that too in relation to issue as to whether the amended section 10 of the Specific Relief Act is prospective or retrospective in operation. Doing case summary for this particular judgment is a request from Bharat Kumar who is our subscriber. Bharat Kumar, we thank you for your suggestion and please continue to do the same. To know more about the specific performance case, please watch this video fully. If you feel that is useful to you, please like, share and comment and never ever forget to subscribe to it and further click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Hi everyone, uh, today I'll be discussing a latest Supreme Court judgment with you all. So, in this important judgment title, Srimati Katta Sujhata Reddy and Anadis uh, versus Siddham Shetty Infra Projects Private Limited and others, which was pronounced on 25th of August 2022. The Supreme Court has held that the 2018 amendment to the Specific Relief Act is a prospective and uh, cannot apply to those transactions that took place prior to its coming into the force. The facts of the case would be that the respondent filed a suit for specific performance against the appellants. The trial court dismissed the suit holding that the plaintiff was not entitled for the relief of specific performance. On appeal, the Telangana High Court held that specific relief in essence is a part of law of procedure and hence 2018 amendment is retrospective. Being aggrieved, the present appeal has been filed. The issues posted for consideration are number one, whether the suit for specific performance is barred by limitation. Number two, is whether the amendment under section 10 of Specific Relief Act is prospective or retrospective in operation. Number three, is whether the purchaser is entitled to the relief of specific performance. Number four, in any case, whether the purchaser is entitled to take benefit of section 12 of the Specific Relief Act in view of the part payment made in respect of the contract. So the Supreme Court has held that the records show that the contract was strictly conditioned on a time frame. In view of the provisions of Section 55 of the Indian Contract Act, the vendors were entitled to resign the contract as there was a breach of condition. Coming back to the point of limitation, it is clear that Article 54 of the Limitation Act mandates that in case in uh, that uh, this case in hand, the date fixed for payment for consideration was three months from the date of the agreement, which is uh, 26th of uh, March 1997 and 27th of March 1997. In any case, the time period for filing the suit commenced from 26 to 27 6 1997 and would have expired after three years that is in the end of june 2000 therefore the suit filed by the purchaser was clearly barred by limitation in view of the first part of article 54 of limitation act and no amount of payment of advance could have remi remedied uh, such a breach of contract the High Court took a different approach in categorizing the Specific Relief Act 1963 as procedure and holding that 2018 amendment is also a procedural provision which requires to be given retrospective effect. This court does not subscribe to the reasoning provided by the High Court for the simple reason that after the 2018 amendment, specific performance is not codified as an enforceable right which is not dependent anymore on equitable principles expounded by the judges. Rather, it is founded on satisfaction of the requisite ingredients as provided under the Specific Relief Act. For determination of whether a substituted law is procedural or substantive, reference to the nature of parent enactment may not be material. Instead, it is the nature of the amendments which determine whether they are in the realm of uh, procedural or substantive law. So, under the pre-amended Specific Relief Act, one of the major considerations for grant of specific performance was the adequacy of damages under Section 14, Clause 1, Subclause A. However, this consideration has now been completely done away with in order to provide better compensation to the aggrieved party in the form of specific performance.
performance. Having come to the conclusion that the 2018 amendment was not a mere procedural amendment, rather it had substantive principle built into its working. This court cannot hold that such amendments would apply retrospectively. Thus, it is clear that when a substantive law is brought about by amendment, there is no assumption that the same ought to be given retrospective effect. Rather, there is a requirement for the legislature to expressly clarify whether the aforesaid amendments ought to be retrospective or not. Ordinarily, the effect of amendment by substitution would be that the earlier provisions would be repealed and amended provisions would be enacted in place of the earlier provisions from the date of inception of that enactment. However, if the substituted provisions contain any substantive provision which create new rights, new obligations or take away any vested rights, then such substitution cannot automatically be assumed to have come into force retrospectively. In such cases, the legislature has to expressly provide as to whether such substitution is to be construed retrospectively or not. In the case at hand, the Amendment Act contemplates that the said substituted provisions would come into force on such date as the central government may appoint by notification in the official gazette or different dates may be appointed for different provisions of this Act. It may be noted that 1-10-2018 uh, was the appointed date on which the amendment provisions would come into effect. So, in the view of the same, the 2018 amendment into the uh, Specific Relief Act is prospective and cannot apply to those transactions that took place prior to its coming into force. Thus, the purchaser ought to have been vigilant in the case at hand to enforce his rights and could not have been uh, lackadaisical in his approach. From the facts, it is clear that the purchaser entered into the agreement way back on 26 or 27 March 1997, which had a clause mandating completion of the contract by payment of the remaining consideration within three months. The aforesaid clause was drafted for providing one last opportunity of the purchaser for the purchaser, I'm sorry, uh, one last opportunity for the purchaser to make good their lapse, which happened on the earlier occasion. In this context, the time for performance of the contract including the payment lasted till the month of June 1997. It was necessary that the purchaser should have taken immediate steps to complete the transaction and if such steps were immediately completed, then the purchaser would have a clear right of uh, seeking enforcement for three years reckoned from the last day decided for the completion of the contract. Further, the facts on record show that the purchaser did not voluntarily adhere to the time stipulation under the contract in order to bypass the condition of time being the essence the purchaser invoked the standard of good faith. A faucet standard prescribes a higher duty of care for parties entering into a contract unless such duty is expressly stipulated, good faith standard cannot be implicitly read into any contract. The facts and the circumstances of this case show that this court cannot accept that such higher standards of good, good faith was relevant. Section 16 Clause C of the Specific Relief Act would only come into force if the purchaser was ready and willing to perform the contract within the three-month period prescribed under Clause 3 of the agreements. The opposing conclusion is also bolstered by the fact that the specific performance can only be granted when essential terms of contract are not violated in terms of section 16 clause B. Thus, the purchaser was not ready or willing to perform his part of the contract within the time stipulated and accordingly specific performance cannot uh, be granted for the entire contract. Regarding the issue as to whether possession was with the purchaser after entering into the agreements, to sell in 1997, the High Court has not duly considered the statement of prosecution witness number one in its proper perspective. However, the testimonies of defendant witness number two and defendant witness number three show that the purchaser was never in possession of the aforesaid land. If the agreement of sale is coupled with possession, it requires stamp duty and stamp duty has to be paid as per uh, Schedule 1A of Article 47A of the Stamp Act. Further, 
asking for the relief of recovery of possession also shows that the plaintiff was not in the possession of uh, of the property the trial court has rightly answered this point against the plaintiff and the uh, appellant court on an enormous uh, on an uh, i'm sorry on an erroneous appreciation of the facts and law reversed the said finding the records show that there was no inability on the part of the parties to perform the rest of the contract or the remaining part was waived in this case the purchaser breached the essential conditions of the contract which altogether disentitles him to a uh, claim the specific performance there is no doubt that the claim of the purchaser is hit by delay and latches on their part as they did not take appropriate measures within the stipulated time and filling uh, filing of the suit was delayed by the almost 5 years therefore this court does not think that it is appropriate case for granting relief to the purchaser in terms of section 12 of the specific relief act of 1963 as the claim of the purchaser is barred by delay latches and limitation further the contract was breached due to the conduct of the plaintiff or the purchaser who were not willing to perform the contract after entering into a time sensitive agreement in any case it is an admitted fact that the plaintiff paid only part consideration though there is a forfeiture clause in the agreement this court with a view of rendering complete justice between the parties deems it appropriate to direct the vendors or the uh, who are the appellants uh, to repay the said amount with the interest of 7.5% per annum from the date such payment was made by the purchaser to the vendors till the entire amount is paid back This court further directs the vendors to pay the entire amount to the credit of the suit account within six months from the date of the receipt of the copy of the order. So that's it for today. Just in case you have any queries or any questions, you can comment in the uh, in the chat box. And I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you.